some introduction, we're going to be going through HP Sprinter today. Um, and traditionally, um, over the past 10 years or so, or a decade, there's been a number of solutions out there to help address testing. Obviously, manual testing has been around. Um, and with the, you know, in the introduction of XRunner, HP's original automated testing tool, uh, it, automation has come a long way. But what HP has realized is that manual testing is still a very large percent of testing in most organizations. And so they've created a new um, interface for this manual testing to help streamline it. And essentially, um, what we're, why, why manual testing is still prevalent, you know, there's a number of methodologies and philosophies out there. But what we're seeing in the dev world is the time to market or the condensed software development life cycles, um, which is forcing testing to, to move at a, at a much faster pace. So where, you know, a, 10 years ago or five years ago, a release happened every six months. Now we start to see organizations um, release about every month. It just depends on the methodology you're using, especially with Agile. And so manual testing has expanded, too. It's not just, you know, here's a Word document, an Excel spreadsheet with a list of steps. Uh, go through it. Uh, manual testing is used for exploratory testing um, to kind of start testing earlier when maybe automation doesn't make sense yet. And um, the issues between testers and developers still exist, whether you're doing manual testing, whether you're doing automation. What organizations tend to see is a challenge when it comes to communicating, communicating the right information, enough information, um, what, you know, whatever it might be. Um, and so Sprinter is also designed to help us uh, making sure that the correct amount of information is being communicated when, when an issue is found. Um, Sprinter is trying to modernize manual testing. So we've got repetitive test steps, right? Every time we go through the login, we have to log in. Every time we go through the shopping cart functionality, we have to input a slew of address information and credit card information, stuff like that. It tends to um, incur errors as we are going through it as manual testers. And so a Sprinter is designed to address these issues and a number of other issues. The, the first one is the traceability in the Quality Center, or ALM. And again, a lot of organizations start out with their tests, their manual tests, in Excel or Word, and then hand those off. And then those efforts have to be imported into your quality management solution. And that's redundant because now someone is having to do these steps twice. So again, um, HP is really pushing, whether you're using the Sprinter interface, whether you're using the ALM or Quality Center interface, start creating your tests, your manual tests, um, in the solution that you're going to run them in. And so when we start in Sprinter, Sprinter automatically uh, connects up into Quality Center and ALM. So anything we create in Sprinter, you get saved up there. And then, of course, when we go to execute, we pull um, the test cases down from ALM and Quality Center. Um, when we go to run a test, typically in a manual environment, what you run into is you have a Snagit-type solution, then you have your Excel spreadsheet of the steps you're going through, and then um, you have your application under test. Screen real estate is a, is a very typical word. Um, it, it can get kludgy and slow you down. And so one of the things that Sprinter does um, right is it helps with uh, maximizing the screen, the screen real estate. So you can see up at the top here and at the bottom, we have a number of different tabs. And when we highlight or click on the tabs, it gives us access to functionality. But when we don't need it, it minimizes. So we have complete um, screen real estate maximization for our application under test. It's a lot easier to use. Um, when we run into a defect, the type of information you want to log has been expanded. So in the old solutions, in the manual runner, it captured a couple little steps, and then you had to type in the rest of the information. Well, now automatically Sprinter can capture screenshots, uh, movies of the last you know, quantity of minutes, um, the last user action. So quite a bit of information automatically being logged. 
um, against your defects. When we talk about exploratory testing, this is testing where maybe you don't have a written uh, layout of your steps yet, right? The development has got an interface done and they want you to go through it. And so you're just pretty much clicking through it. Well, there's a couple problems that you run into. The first one is if you run into a defect, uh, what were the steps that it took to get you there? How do you generate that log? And number two, if you like those steps, how do you then translate that into a test? And so uh, Sprinter can be used to do both of those. So as you're going through your exploratory testing, it can actually record the steps you're going through. So number one, if you do find a defect, then the developer knows how to recreate it. Or number two, if you like this as a test, you can um, save it as a test going forward. Um, when we find a defect, we want to be able to grab a screenshot of it and annotate it, I mean just marking it up, so adding text, highlighting it, basically pinpointing what the problem is. And then as we go through forms, um, forms maybe that we're not testing, we want the ability to enter information quickly instead of typing, you know, clicking into a, a field and then typing the information and tabbing through everything. That can be pretty time consuming. And so Sprinter supports the functionality called data injection, where you set up your um, data in an Excel spreadsheet. And when you get to this step, you go ahead and click the button, and it injects all of the correct data in the correct fields. Just a really big time saver. Another way of doing that is with a recorded macro. This is similar to like an Excel spreadsheet macro. You just need to get through a couple steps. You're not really testing it. We could record those actions, and we get there, just replay the macro, and it'll run through it for you. The last concept that Sprinter helps with is being able to run through the same test on multiple environments at the same time, and this is called mirroring. And this concept is not new when, in terms of automation, right? Uh, in the automation world, you record one test, and you run it on IE9 and IE8 or Windows 7, Windows XP. But it was a little more challenging to do that at the same time um, with manual testing. But with Sprinter, now what you can do is as you are running through your sequence of steps, you can set it up to mirror on these different environments and run through them at the same time, um, comparing your results to what you're getting to see if there's any discrepancies. So again, another really great way to save yourself some time. So in terms of, of understanding uh, the testing market and what people need, um, Sprinter is really designed to streamline your man manual testing. HP knows manual testing is not going away. And so you need a, a, an interface that can accommodate your agile practices, your, your quick release cycles, and the demands of the business. So why don't we go ahead? These are, this is just a summary of all of the benefits and features I just went through. So why don't we go ahead and I'll go into a demo and we'll kind of kind of show you some of these. Okay, so this is the Sprinter interface that we're looking at here. And we're looking at Sprinter 11.5. And this is a solution that comes free with ALM or Quality Center. So it's not something you have to license additionally. But you do install it on your desktop and it can't run in the same desktop or environment that Quick Test or UFT is running. And you have two tabs up here. We have a tab where you want to run. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if I can move it over. Run test and a tab where I might want to plan test. So let's go, let's start with the, the plan. And let's go and we will run through an exploratory test. I'm going to go ahead and do a new test. All right, and be, this is already marked as red because when I create this test, it's like it's creating it in Quality Center or, or ALM. And in ALM and Quality Center, I have some fields that are required. So before I even create this, or, um, I'm going to go ahead and fill out these required fields. And this, again, comes from Quality Center or ALM. But once those are filled out, now I'm going to be able to save it when I need to. But we'll go ahead and call this. Okay, 
So these are our details. Again, a lot of metadata that you can store around a test. And the next thing we want to do is go in and create our steps. Now, similar to what I would do in Quality Center or ALM, I could add a step right here manually. You know, this is traditionally how we did it in um, with the manual runner and creating tests in the test plan module before. Well, at this point, I want to go ahead and capture my steps. And I'm going to capture my steps against an application. Um, I define that in um, that right here. You can select the application and then store these. But I have the tried and true Mercury Tours. You've probably seen this. So I've already got that set up. And what that does is it launches it for me. And then I'm just going to go ahead and go through my login. And you can see as I interact with the application, so we've logged in, and now I can go through, select various cities. And on my right, you can see over here that it's generating my steps. Go ahead and continue. And then maybe I'll go ahead and return home. So it has, I've gone through a number of things. I could go ahead and grab a screenshot if I wanted to. Right, you can set it up to automatically grab screenshots as, shots as I go through various steps. Lots of ways to simply automate that exploratory testing. And at this point in time, now if I like these sequence of steps, I can save this up as an actual test. So when I go to save it, because I've connected to ALM, it saves up into ALM. If I did a save as, you could see this. And I'll show you the test repository that would pop up. It'll allow me to. But if we move back into ALM here, what? Now when I go into here and go into my test plan, so we want the name of it to be or demo. Make sure I'm connecting to the right quality center or ALM. So at this point in time, if I wanted to, I can now go ahead and run this test. Okay? So once we move from plan where we create our test, and execute, uh, we move into what's called run. And this is where we actually execute the test. See if this saved it. Okay. And so, move over to run here. We've opened up a different test already, and this test has 13 steps in it. And I can go through and take a look at it. This is where I log in. Um, and this is where I go through and you know initialize the application and so forth. Again, when I open tests, I'm connecting directly to ALM. So I can decide which tests I want to open. So this is an example uh, of where I've saved my tests up before. Um, let's go ahead and choose find a flight, and we'll run through it. So this time, when I run through the steps, this only has one step, should launch Mercury Tours again. So this time when I'm running through it, I have 
this setup, oh, this actually opens up our MedRec. Let's go ahead and go back to, we'll go back to Mercury Tours, and, and we'll choose one that has Mercury Tours. So we, I want to change my application. So this is the app, this is where you decide which application it launches. I don't want the MedRec, it's not ready. I want the Mercury Tours. So now I go ahead and run it. I should bring up my Mercury Tours. And you can see all of my tabs now. And so I've got, this is where we decide the video or the screenshots. Um, I can stop it right here if I want. This is my steps. Right now I've got the steps kind of highlighted in this fashion. fashion. I can bring up the steps, so I only have one in here. And so as I'm going through this, I can actually, okay, let's say I'm, I go ahead and log in. My one step is to log in, so it's demo. And that passed. And so at this point in time, I go ahead and pass that step. So I come in here and do this. If that, let's say we had some subsequent steps where I needed to check the banner, make sure it was a new banner, or I needed to check the drop-down list. Anytime I want to uh, log a defect, I can. And I can log a defect against the step, or I can log a defect against the whole test. But at this point in time, if I want to grab a screenshot of what I'm observing, I go into our annotation tool, grab the screenshot, and now I can say, all right, let's see. This banner. This banner looks like the old one, right? So then I can go ahead and store this as a new defect. You can see it grabs all this information automatically, and I submit it, and it connects automatically to ALM or Quality Center and brings up my defect And so I log this defect old, defect old banner need to change. I put in all of the pertinent information under attachments. You can see the screenshot. And I click OK. So at this point, now I can go ahead and close. And if I need to, I can go ahead and fail the test. Let's fail this. And then we'll stop it. And so anytime we run this test through Sprinter, it's going to capture all of this information, right? The steps I went through, um, I could go ahead and I could have done this during the run and typed in that information. But in addition to that, it also starts to capture storyboard. So now you can see what I went through for every step. And this is back to that collaboration with developers, right? But one of the hardest problems with defects is logging automatically logging enough information that it can be it can be found um, the defect can be found again. And so now, if we move back into Quality Center or ALM, I use those interchangeably. And let's look at the defects by date. We should be able to see our latest defect we just created. Go.